increase our understanding that we will understand your word. Then help us to reflect as we put them in practice. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, what a journey we have traveled. I was thinking this evening, we have traveled a long journey from Daniel 2. And I thought to myself, you know, sometimes when you, you talk with some people and you say they can't let things go? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that before? Yes. I thought, whenever you think like that again, maybe you should also think about the Lord too. He loves us so much that he can't let it go. You think of Daniel 2, where that brought us. Then Daniel 7, then Daniel 8, and last night we were in Daniel 12. I mean Daniel 12, no? Revelation 12. And tonight we... And we did do a little of Revelation 13, too. And tonight we go back to Revelation 13. And here we find that God is still talking about the same thing. And I can't help but think that it is so important that he wants us to not to forget it. And it reminds me some, so much about the Sabbath commandment. You know, when the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Of all the commandments, that was the only one he used the word remember. And I see the same thing happening here with this piece of prophecy. And uh, when you understand what is about to break on the world, then you are not alarmed at all as to why is it that the Lord spends so much time on this with Daniel and now with John because it is going to be important. Some will walk away from the Lord in this crisis because things will get so difficult that they are in the place where they must decide who they will serve, God or man. By the way, if you understand the situation that Daniel was in and his companions, you will realize it is the same thing. In fact, the, you remember after having that dream and uh, all that explanation, the head of gold and the silver and the brass and the iron, what did Nebuchadnezzar do? He built one, but his was what? All gold. And notice what he did. He made a command, a decree, that when you hear the music, you should bow down and worship. This is all about worship. It's all about worship. And uh, that happened in the plain of Dura. Well, history will repeat itself because the very thing that happened in the plain of Dura 
will take place one last time just before Jesus' return. And this is known as a National Sunday Law. That is going to be the image that will stand in the modern day plain of Dura. No wonder, no wonder God is making sure that we understand what this is all about. No wonder in chapter 7, the fourth beast was so undescribable. No wonder the words that God used, words like what? Dreadful, Dreadful. terrible, exceedingly strong. And we looked, uh, I think it last night, we, we looked at some other words. And tonight, I think we're going to see some other words. And I told you, I say I shiver to even use the words. But the only reason I can use them boldly it is because they are not my words. I am not describing this. God is describing it. I'm only his servant telling you what he says as Daniel, as John. And so I want you to always be aware of that. And if God can use those language to describe this power, then for me, that's okay. Because you know what? He's boss. Yes. And he knows what the right words that should be used. So tonight, we want to make another step. What did John see next? Remember where we left off last night? What did he see next? Revelation 13, and we're reading verses 3 to 9. And I saw one of his head as it was wounded to death. Now, you know this is a classroom, and every now and then I have to test you. I have to test you to see if you're tracking, to see if you're in context with the verse, if you, under, if you remember what came before. So what is this talking about? John is seeing his head, his who? The beast. The beast, which one? Because remember, we saw the great red dragon. And who was that? All right, that was the devil. Then John saw another beast. Has what? Seven heads. Ten horns. All right, and the feet was like what? Bear. And is like a leopard and his head like, and what power was that? The papacy. The papacy. Was that pagan Rome or papal Rome? Papal Rome. Papal Rome. Good. All right. You're doing well. So now God is advancing the story. How did we say God communicate to us? He repeat and what? And enlarge. and enlarge. So if you notice that even though theologically it was there in Daniel 2, in Daniel 7, in Daniel 8, but the language is different and the language used makes it clearer to us. 
So John said, I saw this beast receive a wound. And his deadly wound was healed. What happened after it was healed? The Bible says, all the world wandered after the beast. Allow that to settle in. Now, somebody told me last night, the person said, now when I read the book of Revelation, it is clear to me. And I, and I hope that's what's happening to you. Because I want you to be able to take the book up and you read it and you understand it. Thus you understand what God wants you to understand so you can share with your neighbors because you have a responsibility. The Bible said there was a wound. Now we touch that. Let me see if you can put the cap on. What was this wound? Right. So last night we talked about what? The time and times and dividing of time. A time equal what? Three, right? Or 360 days that turns into years, a day for a year. Then it says time, so that's two times, 360 and half a time. So you have what? 1260 days or years. This was called the Dark Ages. This, you remember in Daniel 7, in Daniel 8, God told Daniel that this beast power, the saints of the Most High, that's us, would be given into his hand and he would persecute the church. I showed you how the church had to run in the wilderness. And you can go to the history book and you will see. And I showed you the Pope um, as he apologized to, to, um, the, to the Protestants and to the Waldensians for the murder and I showed you it was some say it was what over a hundred million Christians they were killed showed you that John saw after this wound was healed now so if you remember what happened the French general right caught the Pope put him in prison, and he died a year later. Thus, the persecution ended. So the prophetic time ended when? 1798 AD. Now that was to commence a new era because God had promised Daniel. In chapter 12, he said, Seal the book, Daniel. Put it down until when? Until the time of the end. I'm just revising for those who are here for the first time. So the time of the end is not the same as the end of time. The time of the end, it is the time when the book of Daniel would be opened up, would be revealed. And people, and the Bible said, they would what? Run to and fro. And, 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 and I know at times we, we, we say that the to and fro mean that people travel, but that's not, that's not the primary, uh, that's not what God was talking about. He was saying that people would go to and fro in the book of Daniel and knowledge concerning the prophecy would increase. All right. So, so when the Pope was 
put in prison, and he died there. What happened? The papacy became what? Unpopular. I share with you that, that many people came from Europe, came to the United States. What were they running from? No, they said what? No, we will never let the papacy be the head anymore. But do you remember what happened in AD 70? You remember what Josephus tried to do? Josephus told his soldiers, do not destroy the temple. but one greater than Josephus had prophesied that not one stone would be left upon another. And you know what happened, right? One soldiers, the Jews were so stubborn that one soldier, he was so angry. You can read all that in history. He lit a torch and he threw it in the temple and the temple burned and it says that it got so hot in there that the gold melted and run down in the stone walls. And to get the gold, the people dug up those stones. Thus, the words of Jesus was fulfilled. Not one stone would be left upon another. Well, here again, you have it again. And for me, it is a clear warning. I told you, when God said that dog would lick the blood of Jezebel as gr at, by the wall, as great as Jezebel and her husband Heb, were they couldn't stop it. And the lesson for you and I in 2018 is that when God speak, listen to him. It is said, because you remember Jesus had said, when you see the Roman army surround the city, it is time for you to go. Yes. And you remember what happened? Yeah. You can read it in history. The Roman army came and they surrounded the city. And for it seemed like for no reason, they picked up and they left. But what had happened? What had happened? Because some people don't know what had happened. There was a reason why they left. The general that came the first time, as they were camping there in Jerusalem, message came to him that his father died. And he wanted to be the next emperor. And so he packed up and went back home. That's why. You see again? You can't stop what God is doing. So he went back and he became the emperor and sent his son, Titus. You cannot fight against God. He says in his word, all the world would wander after the beast. You saw the last time when Pope Francis came to the United States. You saw what happened. You saw the admiration. It's not by chance. If you think it's by chance, wake up. It's not by chance. This is the fulfillment of the word of God. Amen. 
And what you saw happen there, again, the healing of this as the wound is healed. When you saw, when you, in your living room, wherever you were, and you saw Pope Francis standing in Congress, in the people's house, speaking, if you understood prophecy, you would spiritually tremble. Do you know that millions of people in this country didn't even know what that mean? Didn't even know what it mean. Isn't that something? He's talking about prophecy. Right. Didn't even know that that marked, that marked a period in the healing of the wound. And now she feels her strength. And she's making her move. Well, it's in your Bible. After it was healed, all the world wonder. And the Greek word means to admire. Admiration. Now, Americans will travel to Rome to what? Just to see the Pope come out. And all the world wonder, admire the beast. Well, verse 4. And what do they do? And they worship. You see, it's all about worship. You see, admiration is a part of what? Worship. Worship. And they worship, they... Ooh, I tell you, I I kind of shiver when, when I teach this. Come on, tell me what that's saying. Oh, Lord. You see why I can't say it? (laughs) Yeah. I really do hate saying it. Uh, How would we get to that place? We're in a place where you have so many people with PhDs and other of the Ds. Masters, bachelors, how would, how would there exist such darkness that we would do that? But again, God spoke. <laughs> and because he can what? Foresee. He knows what's going to happen. And he's telling us what's going to happen. So they worship who? The dragon who gave power. I showed you last night. I showed you last night. The dragon gave what? His power, his authority, and his seat to the beast. beast. So Satan is the one behind pulling the string. But what is so interesting is that even when this worship is taking place, the people don't know who they're worshiping. They actually think they're worshiping God. And it's because what? Lack of what? Knowledge. Because Jesus is clear. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. A stranger, they won't follow. But something happened that even among Christendom, they follow the voice of a stranger, thinking they're following the voice of God. So it says they worship who who gave power unto the beast, and they worship who? So not only did they worship the dragon, but they worship also what? The beast, saying, listen to these words, who is like unto the beast? If you if, just read your paper, just, just watch what's happening, and you see that fulfilled in your before you. When you hear people say, the Holy See, come on. Come on. Come on. He just went to um, this place here, and, and they want him gone. 
I mean, they want him to resign. But it's presented as what? A God sent outfit. And the people believe it. So you hear the people say, the vicar of Christ. Wow! What stout? Did you hear the word I use? Yes. Isn't that the scripture? Yes. The Bible say that this power would speak what? Stout words. Blasphemous words. It's there in your scripture. So it says they worship. Who is like unto the beast? And who is able to make war with him? Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth what? Speaking great. You see the same thing coming from Daniel? Speaking blasphemous. And power was what? given unto him to continue 42 months. So watch what happened now. In Revelation, instead of saying time, times, dividing of times, it says what? 42 months. How much is 42 months? 1260 days. Yea, 1260 years. Same thing, same message. But like I tell you, even though God repeated it about five, six times, he changes the stories so we don't get bored. <laughs> we read the same story, same message, but we're not bored because he gives it. So this, this beast power, and I prove it to you, no shadow of the doubt who this power is. And history helped us. The only power in the world that has killed millions. And they admit it, praise God. But God told us it was going to happen. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God and to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. We talk about that. I showed you the confessional, right? Yes. The Bible says Jesus is the sin partner, Save. the sin pardoning redeemer. Yes. When you sin, the only person you ask forgiveness to is Jesus, Amen. not a priest. But the Bible said that this power would take the place of Jesus. Yes. Thus you have the confessional. Where people, they commit adultery. So just before they go to mosque, they go to the confessional. Father, I have sinned. Speak what? Blasphemous. You can't forgive sin. Only Jesus can. Amen. But again, we knew it was going to happen. Because your Bible tells you so. Verse 7, and it, was given, and it was given, notice the word, it was given, meaning God allowed that to happen, just as he did in the days of Israel. You remember what God did? He allowed the Babylonians to come and write. Why? Because they were rebellious. And so, the Bible says that God would allow this power to persecute the saints. And so it says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues, and nation. That's what Pope Francis is trying to become. The leader of the new world. Global leader. Verse 8. And all that dwell, ooh, did, what, what did that say? And some, and some. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. But thank God something is coming after. Whose, you remember what we talked about yesterday? Look for the qualifiers. Look for the condition. Whose name is what? whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So every human being will worship this power. 
unless their name are in the book of life. Praise God. Why you think they won't? Like Daniel, huh? Like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stand for God. And there is something that is so sweet about those boys. Because when the king said, when the king was told that these three teenagers wouldn't bow, he loved them. He gave them a, a, a nice job. So he called them, come here, come, 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 come. Did I hear right? You didn't bow? I really like you guys. You guys are respectful. You guys are nice. I, I tell you what, I'm going to give you another try at it. Oh, King. Thank you so very much. But we really don't need that. Because we will not bow to any other God but the true God. Don't you think God is going to have some Daniels again? Praise God. Verse 9. Oh, I love this. I used to tell my student, you know, I, I used to point that out for my students. Listen to verse 9. If any man have an ear, this is Jesus speaking, let him hear. It's like a little warning. I'm telling you what's coming. If you have an ear, please listen. Wow, I like that. Where did you hear this kind of language before? Blasphemous, spoke blasphemously, and all like that. All right, just for those who weren't here, let's look at it again. Daniel what? Seven, seven to eight. After this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, four beasts, dreadful and what? Terrible and exceedingly strong. And it had what? Great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet, and, uh, with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I consider the ten horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, for those who weren't here last night, you want to tell them about those three that were plucked up. Yeah. Tell them the name. Now, give me the first one. <coughs> huh? The Erli, yes. The Vandals and the Ostrogoth. All right? So that, those ten horns, they represented what? Ten kingdoms. Three were rooted up and we went into the history as to what happened. And then came up what? A little horn speaking boastful words. And so that's the same thing he's talking about in Revelation. All right. Where did you hear this kind of language before? You remember? Daniel 8. Let's read that one too. And out of one of them came what? Forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south. And we looked at that. We looked at the map, you remember? And we saw where it's going. It moved to the south, towards the east, and towards the pleasant land. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the hosts. You see? Same persecution. And of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnify himself even to who? The prince. That's who? Jesus. All right. You are with me. The prince of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. By him, the daily sacrifice. What is this sacrifice that Jesus is doing for us, that the priest would do each day before the Day of Atonement. It would be, it would be sanctuary 
service. And Rome replaced that with what? The confessional. Right. So the Bible told us that it was going to happen. So let's go back to what it said earlier now. It says, John said, I saw this beast receive a wound. A deadly wound. All right. Yes. So what is meant by receiving a deadly wound? Revelation 13, 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall what? Uh, isn't that powerful? So here... The church was butchering mm -hmm. God's people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what happened to him? The French general caught him, put him in prison, and he died there. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Don't fight against God. Don't fight against him. He that what? Killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So I Jesus told Peter, put up your sword. Yes. <coughs> put up your sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. How was the deadly wound? Prophecy fulfilled. Well, you remember that man there? Yes. Pope Pius the Sixth. Pope Pius the Sixth condemned the French Revolution and the suppression of the Gallican Church that resulted from it. French troops commanded by Napoleon. Bonaparte defeated the papal troop. You remember I told you that the Vatican has its own army? Yes. Because what? It's a city. That's why we send an ambassador. I told you this thing is not just a church. It's a political outfit. It's a religious political power. And so Napoleon party defeated the papal troops and occupied the papal states in 1798. 96, thank you. In 1798, upon his refusal to renounce his temporal power, Pius was taken prisoner and transported to France. He died one year later in Valence. His reign is the fourth largest or longest in papal history, being over two decades. That's Pope Pius. How long did the scriptures say this papal power would persecute God's people? We looked at it. Before Daniel 7, 25, and he shall what? Speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until time, times, dividing of time. Time, 360 days. Times, two and a half. 1260 days, years. So there you have it. In Daniel 7, verse 25, you have time, times, dividing of times. In Daniel 12, verse 7, you have time, times, dividing of times. In Revelation 12, 14, you have times, times, dividing of times. In Revelation 12, uh, 13, 5, you have 42 months. In Revelation 11, 2, you have 42 months. In Revelation 11, 3, you have 1260 days. In Revelation 12, 6, you have 1260 days. God 
repeating it over and over so that we don't miss it. You miss it if you want to. And so that's how we come up with 1260 days. So the prophetic time started in 538 AD and it went all the way to 1798. The prophetic time ran out. So that was the little horn that came up speaking boastful words, making war against God's people. And you remember, we looked at what Paul said, right? Yes. Paul said the second coming of Christ will not take place until the man of sin is revealed. That's what we have been doing Amen. these two weeks, making sure you understand before time runs out. Remember what I told you, prophecy is made clear through the eyes of history. Through the eyes of history, we can see clearly that the first beast of Revelation 13 is the papacy. John 14, verse 29, what did Jesus say? And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it come to pass, you might believe. History looks back so we can look forward. Amen. Has there ever been an apology from the papal church? Yes. I showed you some already, right? Yes. But isn't that interesting? There's even still more. Just, just a few years ago, uh, they, the Pope Right. There's so much, you know. For those who really want to know the truth, it's out there. Let me give you another one or two, right? even though I gave you some already. Pope Francis asked Waldensian Christians to forgive the church. Pope Francis has asked Waldensian Christian to forgive the Catholic Church for historic persecution. Early today, Francis became the first pontiff in history to visit a Waldensian evangelical church when he attended the Waldensian temple in Turin. The Pope is currently talking or taking part in a two-day visit to the city in northern Italy. The Waldensian church, which was founded in the 12th century, was rejected by the Catholic Church and its members were brutally persecuted during the Middle Ages. On the part of the Catholic Church, I ask your forgiveness. I ask it for the non-Christian and even inhumane attitudes and behavior that we have showed you says Pope Francis. He added, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us. In your paper, Google it. You'll see it. Here's another one. His historic papal apology to our orthodox, right? Pope confesses Roman Catholicism is the mystery of iniquity. Isn't that striking? My Lord. I wouldn't even want to say that. But, 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 but again, you, you, you know what it reminds me of? You remember we were told that just before the wicked are destroyed, they will kneel and confess that God is just. Even though they're going to be destroyed they will say God is just. To hear that, I mean, I mean, it's not that we didn't know that, right? But to hear it coming from, wow, that's interesting. Clearly, there is a need for a liberating process 
of the purification of memory. That, that's he's speaking. For the occasions past and present, when sons and daughters of the Catholic Church have sinned by action and or omission against their orthodox brothers and sisters, may the Lord grant us the forgiveness we beg him for. You remember what I read to you early in the week? Great controversy, right? Yeah. We're told that all these apologies would come. But she hasn't changed. Good. Okay. Here's another one. Pope asks forgiveness for errors of the church over 2,000 years. Saying, we humbly ask forgiveness. John Paul II today delivered the most sweeping papal apology ever repenting for the errors of the church over the last 2,000 years. We cannot not recognize the betrayal of the gospel committed by some of our brothers, especially in the second millennium. The Pope dressed in purple. Ah, you're alive. You know you're alive. As... Let's see if you would react to that. You did. All right. So the Pope dressed in what? Purple robes for Lent said in his homily, recognizing the deviations of the past serves to reawaken our conscience to the compromise of the present. Even though this beast lost one of its head, what was to happen concerning the restoration of the beast? The deadly wound would be healed. She would be strong again. And she would go back to her old tricks. Remember we read last night? She would what? Use peace as a deception. Right. Revelation 13, 3, And I saw one of his head as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world admired the beast. What was John shown next? What was John shown next? Hmm. Uh, that's where we're going to end tonight and allow you to steam over it until tomorrow night. I think we have just a few more slides and, and, uh, and let you go home and sleep on this. Yes, a, a lot of time, but I'm gonna let you out soon. So what was John show next? Revelation 13, 11 to 13, I read. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. Now, let's, let's go back. The beast before this beast, where did it come from? From the sea. What does sea mean in prophecy? And, and, thank you. But this beast is not coming out of a greatly populated area. This beast is coming out of a sparsely populated, sparsely populated era. And he had what? Two horns like a lamb. Pause. There is no one who understand the significance of a lamb as God. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Why did God use that? What does horn mean in prophecy? Power, Power right? Leadership. So what God was telling John is that this new beast, he's going to exercise 
spiritual leadership. In other words, he is going to act religious. Born like a lamb, the lamb of God. So let's read on. But he speak like a dragon. So it's a front, right? Yes. It's a front. Act like it's religious, but when it opens its mouth, it speaks like a dragon. Do you begin to hear the dragon sound? Yes. Here comes another beast. But this time it comes out of the earth. Now if the sea means areas where there are lots of people, earth would mean where there was not many people. Did a few power arise near the close of the 12, I mean, sorry, did a new power arise near the close of the 1260 years around 1798? Yes. In areas where there was not many people? Yes. You know, when I look at this, I, I just, I just say, you know how God is so sweet. <laughs> Even if you didn't want to believe it, you're trapped. I'm going to give you two that you can pick from. But if you pick them, you're wrong. The only two others that you can pick is China or Russia. They're not even great as this power, right? But let's say you didn't want to admit it. And you say, oh, I think it's China. Oh, I think it's Russia. Here is the problem you face. They don't have horns like lamb. You are the problem. Because they're not a Christian nation at all. And this power that John is seeing is a Christian nation. Amen. And you take away China and Russia, you have nobody. Nobody left. Only one power that has the ability to command the world, and the world will listen. And that's the United States of America. What a God. What a God. You trace your footsteps through prophecy, through the field, through the jungle of prophecy, and you come full circle. Right as this, right as this dark age was closing. A new power was marching on. Don't you understand? That's why on the 4th of July, we celebrate what? Independence. 17 when? 17. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That prophetic time ended when? 1798. And as it was ending, this new power, world power, was coming on the scene. John saw it. Every 4th of July, if people were studying the Bible, it would speak to them. Because they would look on the year, and they would look in Bible prophecy and say, Wow, God showed that this was going to come on. What did this beast do? Revelation 12. Revelation 13, 12. 
and he exercises all the power the beast. of the first beast. Now, what was the first beast? Oh. Right, that lion head, seven heads, right, right. Now, interestingly, the Bible said that this last power would exercise the power of the first beast. I told you something earlier on. I said that when you sat in your living room and you saw Pope Francis standing in Congress, you should be shaken if you understood prophecy. Because you see, that was preparing its way for that. Finally, finally. Do you know what that means theologically? For the papacy to stand in the free world, in the people's house? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. All those so-called great statesmen, they sat there and they didn't even know what it mean. Yes, man. Yes, man. Bible prophecy. Yes, sir. And he exercises all the power of what? The first beast before him. And he caused, oh, oh, look at that word. He caused, he caused only one nation on this globe that has the power to cause That's right. Amen. other nation to worship this beast. You remember I told you early in the week that though prof prophetically you look at the papacy, but the papacy isn't going to do the dirty work. America. The papacy is going to use Protestant America to do the dirty work while the Pope looks clean. Yes. He exercised what? All the power of the first beast. So for you to understand that, you have to go back and look on the power of the first beast. Well, this last beast exercised that, and he caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship. I told you, it's all about worship. It's all about worship. You know, a few years ago, you say this and people laugh at you. You don't have to be afraid to say it now. There is going to be a national Sunday law in this country. Yes. Yes. Don't have to believe me tonight. But when you see it, you'll remember. And let me tell you what date it was. It, it, it was what? September 2, 2018. And you were at the Farmville Seventh-day Adventist Church when you heard that. There will be a national Sunday law in this land where people will be forced. And you see how he's presenting it? He's telling the people, we need, we need a Sunday worship for the family. <laughs> right? Deception. Deception. It's a false Sabbath. It's the image in the plain of Dura. So when we talk about the mark of the beast, you, you know, you, you hear all kind of ideas out there. Pe pe people don't understand what they're talking about. To, to, oh, oh, I don't want a social security because that's the mark of it. Nonsense. That's nonsense. And Satan laugh when people talk like that. Because what? He moved them from the real truth. This mark of the beast is no mark that is going to be on your hand. Or you're for it. It is talking about your thinking here, the decisions you're going to make here that is going to affect what you do, your work. It's a decision. It's a worship. God has a Sabbath. Satan has a Sabbath. And the beast has always set out to set up a Sabbath apart from God's Sabbath, and she boasts about it. Yes. 
and some of you may have read it, where she offered what? A thousand dollars. Yes, she did. That if you can show in this book, she said, if you can show in this book where God has changed the day from Saturday to Sunday, you will receive a thousand dollars. Do you know why she said that? She's boasting. She's telling you, we have the authority too. So it says, what? And them that dwell on the earth to worship the beast whose deadly wound. In other words, she come back to life. Yeah. Which beast was before him? Revelation 13, 1. That's the beast. That's the beast. So this new beast point the world to the papacy. Build an image to the beast. For this new beast to cause the earth and the people of the earth to worship the first beast, which is identified as a papacy, the new beast has to be a very powerful nation. Seeing that beast represents what? Nation and kingdom. Again, we will look at history and see if any such powerful nation came up around that time. Look at how trustworthy worthy the word of God is. Look how trustworthy. The bitter persecution started around 538 AD and it was to go on for 1260 years, which takes us to 1798 AD. The papacy received a wound when the Pope was put in prison, where he died a year later. That stopped the persecution. Just around that time, a new nation came on the scene. Which was it? The United States emerged from the 13 British colonies established along the East Coast. Numerous disputes between what? Great Britain and the colonies following the French and Indian War led by the American Revolution, which began when? In 1775 and the subsequent declaration of independence in 1775. 76. Just when that prophetic time was ending, coming on the scene, was a new nation. New nation. And so Nebuchadnezzar, John the Revelator, this is the only nation that came up between what? 1700 and two. 2018 that has become the most powerful nation on earth just as God showed Nebuchadnezzar the rise of the Medes and Persians the Greeks and the Roman Empire so he has shown John the rising of the last powerful nation before the return of Christ the United States of America this is the only nation today that has the power to influence all the nations of the world. So prophecy started with the most powerful nation on earth, Babylon. And it will end with the most powerful nation on earth, the United States of America. Strike those keys, let us sing about this love of God. Strike those keys, let us sing it. Give us a good note, and so we can bellow. Yeah, we can bellow. All right, let's stand. <laughs>